The, welcome to Some Arts, the arts calendar show produced by Somerville Media Center. I'm still Dave and it's October. Let's take a look at the listings. Triple Decker Ecology, Somerville's Urban Landscape is an exhibit exploring the urban ecology of Somerville that's on view at the Somerville Museum starting October 11th and it runs through the rest of the month. Curator Penny Taylor and artist David Buckley Borden received a community curator grant in this show that uses the museum's historic collection and knowledge from community stakeholders on topics including urban wilds, waterways, and species. Borden will create a dozen proposals for a trail of sculptures that will communicate science stories to passers-by. The exhibit team will realize several of the proposals with an anchor piece outside the museum on Central Street. Inside the museum, collection items will be installed with process works to highlight local ecological history. More info is at the Somerville Museum website at somervillemuseum.org. Mark your calendars for October 20th and 21st because the 9th Annual Massachusetts Independent Comics Expo, better known as MICE, is back at University Hall at Lesley University. The event is produced by the Boston Comic Arts Foundation and hosted by Lesley University College of Art and Design. Unlike traditional comic shows, which emphasize commerce and memorabilia, MICE puts a focus on the art of comics making by connecting local creators with local audiences. Makes sense. Special guests this year include Vera Brosgold, Jim Woodring, Tilly Warden, Tony Cliff, Keith Knight, Rosemary Moscow, Rosemary Mosco, and Andrew McLean, and Charles Forsman. Find out more at micexpo.org. Are you an artist, community group, or school interested in receiving funding for your work? Of course you are. Applications are now open for the local cultural council grants. But hurry, the deadline is October 15th. The Local Cultural Council LCC grant program is funded and overseen by the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Somerville LCC program grants are reviewed by the Somerville Arts Council board members and local peers with expertise in the appropriate disciplines. Each year, new panelists are convened to renew new submissions, to review new submissions even. Check the Somerville Arts Council website at somervilleartscouncil.org for full guidelines, grant info, session dates, locations, and of course, how to apply. Honk is finally here, and I couldn't be happier. And I had a chance to speak once again with Mr. Honk himself, Ken Field. Here is what he had to say. I'm here with Ken Field, who is on the organizing committee of Honkfest, which is happening in October. We, we look forward to it each year. Uh, I'm excited for him to be here. Hello, Ken. Hello, how you doing, David? I'm doing all right. Good. Not too bad. Good, happy to be here. Happy honk. Yeah, happy honk. It's honk. that time of year. It's that frantic time of year getting ready for the honk festival and we're, uh, we're working hard. And uh, so what, what exactly are you doing to get ready for it? Well, there's, there's uh, you know, as it turns out, who knew? There's a million details. <laughs> uh, there's a million things of uh, organizing all the bands, finding housing for them, finding, uh, getting food set up for them, setting up the... Uh, uh, various venues that they're going to be playing, organizing the schedule for the bands, uh, which is an incredible puzzle piece because some of the bands share members, so you can't have them playing at the uh. same time. Uh, and that's uh, uh, arranging transportation, uh, arra working with the city of Somerville and the city of Cambridge uh, in terms of the parade and making sure that all that, that's working out well. Um, for people that don't know, the festival takes place uh, October 5th, 6th, 7th, and uh, it is, uh, uh, we have events on all those days. We have about 20, I think 28 bands coming from all over the, uh, uh, the country and outside of the country uh, this year. Uh, something like 600 musicians. Wow. And these are uh, generally, we call ourselves a festival of activist street bands, so these are bands for the most part that are uh, community-based and are active in their communities doing things that uh, they feel are positive, have a positive impact on their community. Uh, maybe their local community, maybe their the national community, maybe politically oriented, maybe uh, uh, different, but uh, these are all bands that are really do, doing things uh, having a positive impact on the world. So. Saturday, Sunday is the parade. Sunday is the parade. And so what goes on, which we'll talk about, yeah. um, what goes on Friday and Saturday? So Friday uh, afternoon, uh, there are some 
uh, events where we bring some of the bands and they do workshops, uh, after school workshops. Hmm. Uh, those are not generally public events, but we take advantage of some of the groups that are coming into town. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, New Creations Brass Band from New Orleans is going to do a workshop at Somerville High School on uh, Friday afternoon. And there are some other events that are going to take place uh, various places. Then Friday night, uh, we're going to have a big kickoff, and it's going to be at the Bow Street Markets uh, in Union Square. Oh, wow, just, um, just over there. Yeah, uh, a place that I had no awareness of. I didn't <laughs> even know it existed. But where did this come from? Uh, yeah, it just kind of sprung up. Yeah, out of nowhere yeah. Over there. so we're going to have uh, a bunch of things there, a tune share where different people from different bands can uh, learn, e learn each other's material. Uh, different bands will have the opportunity to perform for a brief time. Uh, be a kind of a meet and greet for the bands Very and, cool. and the public's invited. Uh, we also will have a couple of bands playing uh, at Aeronaut on Friday night. Um, a band from, uh, from South America and a band from, uh, uh, I think from Minneapolis. Uh, no, that's not right. Anyway, from another place. The Forward, the forward Marching Band is going to play there as well. So uh, there'll be a couple of these little showcases at Aeronaut, and then we'll also have this big uh, uh, meet and greet. On Saturday is the big day of the festival, really, mm. where all the bands play in Davis Square. Uh, it's all free. They play from about noon until 9 p.m., rotating around. Some of the bands have multiple uh, slots. Most of them do. And uh, there is also new, as of last year, and we're, we're expanding it this year, is um, a sort of art, participatory art uh, uh, placement along Elm Street mm. where different uh, organizations and groups that we've worked with are going to come in and work with the public to create visual art and other kind of uh, performance uh, oriented art with the public as all this other stuff is going on. Oh wow. So there's some very interesting, very uh, politically motivated uh, forward-thinking stuff that's going to go on there. It should be very exciting. It was very successful last year. Very cool. Yeah. And and then the, the parade. And then the parade you on cap Sunday. Cap it all off with a big parade. <clears throat> big parade on Sunday at noon, stepping off at noon from uh, Davis Square to Harvard Square. And that's always a lot of fun. People love it. Uh, we love it. And we invite a number of community groups to participate uh, in the parade, both to like reveal what they do and also to uh, separate the bands mm. so they're not multiple bands playing right next to each other. Uh, so you mentioned a few bands uh, yeah. specifically are there any other th bands that uh, you want to highlight? Well there's there's a bunch this year of new bands uh -huh. there are a bunch of bands that have formed through the years inspired by our festival or the other honk festivals that have sprung up all over the world mm. uh, uh, based on our festival and so uh, we're excited to have some of them here. Uh, there's a band called ba Band Land Brass Band. Huh. And there are a number of high school students from Cambridge, uh, from Cambridge Ridge, Ridge Latin, who were inspired to create a, uh, a honk type band. Um, Rise Up uh, Action Band, um, is that right? Uh, is coming in, they were, uh, they're relatively newly formed mm -hmm. and they're coming in. Um, and there are a couple of others, uh, Unlawful Assembly, they're from Twin Cities. That's a great name. Yeah, <laughs> and they, they were formed relatively recently. Um, and just a lot of bands uh, see what we do here, see the other bands that are performing, see that they can use their music and their skills and their energy uh, as a, and their creativity as a positive force in their mm. community. And people really want to do that and we are very happy about that. So we try to invite as many of those new bands as we can. Um, we also have a, a group of uh, uh, a Mardi Gras Indian group from New Orleans called the Red Flame Hunters that started as a, a youth oriented uh, organization to work with kids to have them learn how to make Mardi Gras Indian costumes, uh, a, uh, a mm. tradition in New Orleans at Mardi Gras time. And they are coming with, with some of those individuals who have aged over the years, but um, so they're a little older, but they're going to come and do a, a, a costume workshop on Elm Street Nice uh, during the, the, the art uh, part that I mentioned to you. And uh, they also have a band with them, so they'll be performing as well. So we're, we're excited about the whole thing. Um, there's a band, uh, uh, Unidos to Swing, they're from uh, huh. Sao Paulo. And they started their own honk festival in 2017 wow. in Sao Paulo. 
and they're coming, uh, playing a combination of uh, Brazilian and American music. It's going to be really exciting. That's that sounds exciting, yeah. and and just th that honk has been able to spawn like not only other honk fests, but yeah. it's inspiring musicians to create, as you yeah. say, like activist bands. Yeah, and uh, it's it's just beautiful like passing on it is it's become quite the over this is our 13th year it's become quite a a, a movement a, commu a community <clears throat> people think of this every year as a, a reunion of the community a, a chance to get together and see their friends mm. from all over um, and you know one of the things you know after the festival's over there's always a question what can you do during the year and uh, uh, there are a couple of things actually I thought of uh, about that uh, one of the things is form a band. You know, if you're excited about what happens at the Honk Festival and you want to uh, make it happen in your own community, um, form a band. There are a number of bands in the Boston area, Somerville area, that have formed uh, for just that reason, and there's always room for more. Mm. Um, it's also uh, really exciting to us. We have quite a number, as I mentioned, of community groups marching in the parade. Uh, get involved with some of these community groups. Uh, do something, be active. We, we call ourselves a festival of activist street bands. People always say, what does activist mean? Mm. And I say, it means you're not passive. You're active. You participate in the process. And one way to participate is to join some of these community organizations that are doing good work in their community and uh, uh, have an impact that way. And the third thing is that the organizers are working crazy mm. uh, amount to put this thing together and we could use help. <laughs> we could always use help. So if somebody is out there listening and thinks that they might be able to, um, uh, they're excited about the festival and they want to get more involved, they should reach out to us through our website, honkfest.org. There's a con contact uh, page. And they can reach out and say, you know, I'd like to get more involved. I'd like to help you guys out. Uh, and we more than welcome that to happen. Uh, we'd love to have some help. That's great. Um, now the is there any is there any sort of year round um, events that Honk does? The, you know the festival it's, uh, the festival itself um, not particularly, but there are bands that form, and, and the notable one is the School of Honk. Mm. So the School of Honk, which is a separate organization from the Honk Festival, we're we're, we're totally independent. But uh, if people want to play music they can get involved in the School of Honk and they can, you can find them online and uh, they meet year round and parade around and learn material and so that's a very good way year round to get involved. We do the planning as I said for the festival mm -hmm. year round yeah. so uh, we'll start probably kicking in no later than December Really, with that's our soon. planning for next year Yeah, and start putting out calls for bands and stuff so so there's a lot of work that can be done, and uh, as far as events, we have fundraisers once in a while throughout the course of the year, and we'll try to make sure people know about that. Um, so there are a few things that happen, meetings and uh, public meetings, volunteer meetings that take place, but the festival really is what it's all about. The festival really is what it's all about. So, yeah, Honkfest, it's a Somerville institution. It's its quickly becoming a worldwide institution. Yeah, um, yeah it's always a pleasure to have you, Ken. And yeah. um, good luck with all the organizing you have to do. And, uh, yeah, we love Thank Honk. You. Thanks very much. Yeah, take care. Hope to see you there. Community Media Day is an annual celebration of voices that brings awareness to the importance of free speech and accessible media for all individuals to have their voices heard. On a national level, Community Media Day has received an overwhelmingly beautiful outpouring of support from all across the country with fellow community media crusaders. Learn about Somerville media making, low-cost adult media education, next generation youth media, SCAT TV, Boston Free Radio, podcasting, and so much more. Are you curious about what goes on in our building? Always passed by but never stopped in? We hear that a lot. You're always welcome to come in, but on Saturday, October 20th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., come get a tour of our studios and edit suites. Meet SMC producers, voice your support of community media to the FCC, and get some swag. More info is at somervillemedia.org. Get in the Halloween spirit already at the East Somerville Halloween Block Party on Saturday, October 27th from 3 to 6 p.m. at Chucky e. Harris Park. 
This annual block party is one of the many initiatives East Somerville Main Street organizes to revitalize the E Cross Street area and Chuck E. Harris Park. Join other families and local nonprofits and enjoy Halloween themed activities and a beautiful fall weekend. Partners in include Beautiful Stuff, uh, sorry, Beautiful Stuff Project, Space Park, Mudflat Studios, and Parts and Crafts. More info is at eastsomervillemainstreets.org. The Arlington International Film Festival runs from October 25th to the 28th and offers a unique opportunity for cross-cultural education by promoting understanding of the many cultures represented in Arlington and beyond. Included in their mission is the commitment to nurture the next generation of talented filmmakers by offering a unique opportunity for local high school students to showcase their talent in film and graphic art. A full schedule of this year's films is at AIFFest.org. The Somerville Arts Council is just wrapping up its very full event season this year. Nina Eichner stopped by to reminisce about it as well as to plug just one more event for this month. I am here with Nina Eichner from the Somerville Arts Council and she is here to talk about some events coming up in October and also to do a, a roundup of how the year has been for her and the Arts Council. So, hello. Hi. After talking about you in the third person. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um, so uh, what what is up in October? I know, as I just said in my intro, you're coming off of the very busy, yeah. you know, set of months with all the summer, spring and summer programming, mm -hmm. and now it's kind of winding down for you. Um, so what's, what's on, on the deck for October? So October 14th is our last Summer Streets event. So we have four Summer Streets every year. And this is the last one, it's on Somerville Ave. It starts right here in Union Square and goes up to Park Street, um, about half a mile down Somerville Ave. And just like the other Summer Streets, we fill the street with interactive activities, um, stages with music. And for this festival, since it's pretty close to Halloween, we do do some Halloween themed activities. So. Artists in Asylum um, carves giant pumpkins with chainsaws. Oh, cool. Um, which is super fun. I just got a tour of that facility it's the other great, day. It's a great space. Yeah. They do a lot of really interesting work there. And um, they're, really, they're really fun to partner with because they always have weird ideas for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's fun. They've been doing that the last many years. So they kind of set up 100 pound, we order them 100 pound pumpkins and they bring their chainsaws and carve like jack-o'-lanterns out of the pumpkins. Wow. Um, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> And then we have a costume parade um, for kids and people who are young at heart to join us. School of Honk will lead the parade and anyone with a costume can join and we parade throughout the length of the festival um, ending on the stage and everyone with a costume gets a little prize and um, it's really, it's, you know, it's a fun kind of Halloween tradition. Cool. Yeah. And I believe you have a poster for the event yeah. here. So all of our Summer Streets posters are made by Eli from Union Press and we love them. They're beautiful. This is our last one for the year. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's creepy, but not too <laughs> creepy. Not too creepy. Um, so yeah, as you can see, Somerville Ave Union Square to Park Street, um, 2 to 6 p.m. on the 14th. And it's a really fun event. It's a nice kind of fall festival. Um, Mass Ave Music, who's on that stretch, is producing a stage. Um, we're producing a stage, and Sally O'Brien's has music and a beer garden outside um, of their space. And now that Bow Market is up and running, um, we're excited to have them within the festival space and have um, all of those shops as an additional attraction that you can visit during the event. So shop, shops, uh, like booths with exactly. vendors, yep. uh, costume right. parade, um, yep. chainsaws. Yep. Chainsaws, <laughs> what more could you want? <laughs> um, Somerville Flea partners with us to bring their artists and vendors to the festival, so they kind of curate that market, uh, which is really great. And then, you know, other activities. Um, we always encourage people to bring their bikes and their skateboards and roller skates and just come and be active because mm -hmm. It's not often that a major thoroughfare in Somerville is not filled with traffic or, or construction. cars or construction. So it's a good opportunity to come be active and also just get, get out in the community. A lot of community, um, ac excuse me, community organizations will come and have activities and tables so you can learn about things that are going on that you might not already know about. And um, the music's great, and you know there'll be good food, and it's a fun time. Is there going to be cider? 
That's a good question. I'm sure that Sally O'Brien <laughs> will have some hard cider. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if we'll have some child-approved cider, okay. but I should get on that. Oh, that would be all good. right. That's, that's my Thank suggestion. Thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. I'll pass that along. I think, you know, if the weather gets a little totally. crisp, you that's want, true. you want like, a hot cider. In your, Definitely. In your hand. Or hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Yeah. That's a good point. You know, the neighborhood restaurant is going to be vending at the festival. Oh, cool. So maybe I'll suggest that they bring some hot drinks along with them. Very nice. Um, the recreation department is always part of these events. They're a great partner. And for this festival, um, they have mini pumpkins that kids can carve. So you can be inspired by the chainsaw pumpkin carving and then, um, and then carve make your, your own. own. Pumpkin. Yeah. Um, and they'll also be trick-or-treating a lot of the local businesses. Um, on the stretch, we'll have, we have a little map that we give out that says where you can trick or treat at the local businesses, so that's fun. Very cool. Yeah. Um, now, you had also mentioned um, another event that is going on yeah. in October, so, something even more Halloween related. Yeah, so a few days later, actually, um, we figure, you know, parents make or buy Halloween costumes for their kids or um, young people make their own costumes, and then you want places to wear those costumes. So, yeah. in addition to coming out to Summer Streets in costume, um, later that week on the 18th at City Hall, there's trick or treating. Um, we've done this for the past few years. Um, the city, uh, we organize, you know, trick or treating throughout City Hall, which is really fun. You can go to City Hall and trick or treat at the different departments. And then there's also a haunted house organized by the rec department. And they do a really high quality, um, fun and scary haunted house. And that will be in the high school right next door. So um, on the 18th in the evening, um, you can come out and do that as well. Um, so those are some two fun Halloween events that are both free and open um, in the city. Very cool. Yeah. And so that is that put like a pin in your event season, those yeah, two events? Yeah, it does. I kind of measure the event season from late April to the end of October. Okay. That's like the, the kind of heavy season. Um, we do have our Illuminations tour, which is our Holiday Lights tour in December, but you know, there's enough time in between that I kind of don't count that in the season. Yeah. Yeah, so it's almost done. We, we had a lot of great events this year. and. We're very lucky to all the partners we had on our festivals, and it'll be good to have a little downtime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any any standouts of all the events that you oh, that's um, a good question. produced? That is a little tricky. I don't want to, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, not. Them. Yeah, no favoritism, um, <laughs> but but still, just some you insight. You know, the Big Gay Dance Party, which is was in its second year this year, was really a highlight. Um, I think it's proved a second year. You know, you do something for the first time and. It's great, but you never know how it's going to be received if you do it again. Mm -hmm. um, and the second year was even bigger than the first year, and it seems like there really was a need that was filled by that event um, for LGBTQ people and allies in Somerville to get a chance to celebrate Pride Month in their own community. Yeah. So I really loved that. It was really fun for me, and we had two really wonderful drag queens come and perform. We had a great DJ and a wonderful community, and we have a lot of... Um, community groups that serve the LGBTQ community who came out and tabled and um, that was really great. So I love that and I'm excited to, um, you know, there's always kind of this push to make things bigger every year and we don't always want to, you know, kind of expand every year but I think with the gay dance party hopefully next year we will do a little bigger, I'm thinking. A bigger gay more dance queens, party? Yeah, <laughs> gayer. Um, <you laughs> bigger know. gayer, okay. Yeah, that's cool. the idea. So that, that was great and I'm excited to do that again. Um, our Ignite Festival, which was really touch and go in terms of the rain, um, we pulled that off and it was a beautiful festival and um, that every year is just, it's really exciting to have a really diverse mix of um, audience and performers and food and that was, that's always really one of my favorites. Um, and actually, the Hip Hop Festival, which as we're filming this is coming up in a few days, but once it's aired, will be over. Um, yeah. That's a festival I really love every year because um, it really grew from the ground up and there's people who have been part of it for the last three years who really put so much heart and soul into it. Um, and that's a great, a great event that really showcases local um, up and coming hip hop artists and again, like a really diverse audience and performer set and that's really exciting. Mm. Yeah. So is all your downtime, downtime, uh, <laughs> right, yeah. is all your, your time uh, outside of the uh, event season uh, dedicated to organization for next year? Yeah, a lot of it is planning. Um, I really love the opportunity to continue every year. I try to make more systems and more kind of templates and more structures 
um, put more things in place so that each year is smoother than the year before. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I really enjoy having the actual time and space to do. And then I spend a lot of it really making new connections with people who might want to produce events. Our Arts Union Festival is a producer model, so people can apply to us if they want to do a festival, and then we'll work with them. So I'm really looking, especially this year, to work with artists um, from um, marginalized identities who want to put on festivals that speak specifically to those groups. That's not the only thing we'll do, but that's something I'm particularly looking out for. And so if people have ideas or want to help produce something, um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and and it, they can find you through the Somerville Arts Council website. Yeah, exactly. Website. And my email's on there. They can you know, reach out on Facebook. Um, and then, actually, I forgot to say, one of the projects we really liked doing this year, which is amazing, was our mural project. Yes. We had these amazing... I was going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, these three you know, street artists come to Somerville and paint these incredible murals. And so I think a lot of what I'll also be doing, in addition to planning festivals during this winter time and spring, is to start hopefully planning for doing that again next year. Full year of a lot of really great uh, Somerville Arts Council programming, yeah. and um, you are you seem to be at the center of a lot of that. I know it's a, it's a team effort, yeah, um, but I, I'm mostly in touch with you, so I, I associate all of this with you. And um, a okay. uh, great, great job this Thank year, you. and we look forward to seeing yeah. a bigger, brighter, uh, gayer. Year, in 2019. <laughs> okay, yeah, in 2019. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for coming on, Nina, and um, get out to these October events and um, say hi to Nina if you see her out there. Yeah, thank you. Again, I'll finish uh, with uh, talking about you in the third person. Great. So. As you should. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, that does it for Some Arts this month. If you're an event producer, reach out to me with the details of your event and we'll feature it in our listings on our digital community bulletin board and here on Some Arts. The SCAD TV digital community bulletin board and Some Arts are services of Somerville Community Access Television and Somerville Media Center. I'm still Dave. Have a crisp month and we'll see you next time on Some Arts.